What is up, Flip Squad? Welcome back to another episode of Flip Talk Podcast, episode six. We have our co-host Alex, and we have a uh, what up, what up, and we have our guest Andrew. What's going on, bro? Yo, what's good, bro? Oh what's man, I, I'm I'm excited for this podcast because um, like we go back. Um, you're the f- youngest person we've brought on too. Um, I feel like you can represent your generation, uh, being that you're a little younger than Alex and me. Um, and yeah. and I feel like um you'll be able to see how much we can relate being from different generations, but also like, I feel like you have an interesting story. Um, you have a, you know, cool background with sports and everything. So I'm excited for that, uh, to talk about just everything. So, um, let's introduce you. So, uh, Andrew is my, uh, used to be my next door neighbor. Um, when we, you know, we live upstate next to each other and, yeah, uh, sure was <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And, um, oh, yeah. And, and we have, like, mad crazy stories. It used to be mad cool just having him, like, literally next door. Um, like, you'll just be coming out of the house in the morning mad randomly. And, and like, you'll look over. It's like, yo, yo. Like, the little things, right? <laughs> but, but yeah. So, I I want to just start from the beginning. So, it's kind of, like, where you grew up and um, and just how how uh, you got into, like, sports as a child. Or, or what motivated you to, like, even entertain it. Cause there's so much you can do as a kid, and like, and kids have such a short attention span that like they yeah. try they try a thousand different things uh, throughout their childhood. So let's just start there. So where do you grow up, and just tell me a little bit about that. Well, I grew up in the Bronx, uh, where you know the Bronx Zoo is, Virtual Virtual mm. Avenue or Boulevard. I forgot what it was, but and then we moved up here, and um, you know we were new, so we're trying to get to know the area, but. Mm. Um, my dad put me into football, put me into every sport, actually, basketball, football, lacrosse, um, swimming. I did almost everything. It was crazy. But I think the sport I loved the most was definitely football. I absolutely loved that sport. Um, but would I do it again? Definitely. No yeah. doubt. So, uh, yeah. so, so at what point did you move from the Bronx to uh, upstate? Like, how old were you about? Um, well, we moved up, I think, like, my brother was born. So it was, like, 2007, 2008. Mm-hmm. So probably, like, seven to eight years after I was born. So, okay, you know, I was still young, but I still, I do remember, I still remember, you know, you know, where I was, you know. The city. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Just... I, I still remember things, but not uh, too much. For sure. Was it hard for you to adapt? I know you were young. I don't. Um, you might not remember everything, but like yeah. when you, when you do you see the transition because it's like from yeah, going bro, to there's, yeah. There's grass. There's grass up here. There's no grass in the city. That's all you see. <laughs> Asphalt and train tracks. That's all you hear. I remember every morning too when I used to wake up. My mom she used to take me to school, um, and the alarm would go off all the time in the back. I don't know why it went off. It was, that shit was scared to shit, but it would be every morning. Every morning, she'll wake me <laughs> yeah. up early and we'll go. For you pass sure. by now. You should pass by Southern Boulevard now. Now there's grass and trees. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're <laughs> yeah, upgrading, yeah. man. I, I know. You know what's funny is my um my uncle lives where I used to live, and I mm-hmm. I used to go there from time to time. But I'm like, damn, it's getting worse down here. Like it, none of this was here. You know, it was a lot better looking. Now it's just I don't know what's going on, but. For sure. Now they've been fixing it up. Now they've been fixing it up, and there is they, they're changing that whole area back there. It yeah. looks very, very, very distant from when I went to school because I went to Grace Dodge, so it's right there. And obviously, you know, Southern Boulevard, those areas, yeah. little Italy, that areas are kind of now it's very different, very, oh, very yeah. different now. It changed uh-huh. the whole city up. And then you notice, like the for me personally, like when I did the whole move from the city to like upstate, I I noticed like the the vibe was different within the like people just in general like i feel like upstate everybody's so much more chill i feel like in the city everybody's like fast paced everybody's trying to get to work everybody's like oh honking like move your car everybody's double parked yeah you like you don't you don't see that upstate upstate is like this parking lots everywhere like everybody's like excuse me nobody really like honks i mean depends where you are right there's a scenario yeah. but but like um how was that like before even we talk about high school like T- tell me about like kind of like middle school. I guess that's where you went when you first moved, right? Like it was kind of like elementary and middle school, right? Yeah. So when mm. I came up, it was like it was like more elementary school, yeah. And mm-hmm. then did a little bit of elementary school up here, and then you know went to middle school and then high school up here. So gotcha. Been up here mostly in my life. So. So what was the biggest thing you noticed that was different? Like, 
between just the school vibes? Bro, the atmosphere is totally different. I, you know, it's a lot. There's a lot more blanquitos up here, you know. It's, it's a lot. It's very. Yeah. It's, it's like it's totally different because you see a lot of you know mix in the city. You know, mm-hmm. everybody's like you got different groups. You know, Jamaican, Puerto Rican. You know, Jamaican. You know, you got all these. You know, separate people, and then you go upstate and you got totally like, you know, you know, white. You know, it's just very. That's why I, I was mostly raised with a lot, a lot of, a lot of white kids I went to school with, but you know. You know, my parents just told me to, you know, adjust to it, get used to it. You know, it's not like the city, but, yeah. you know, it wasn't too bad. You know, I, I got to take. I was very grateful. So. Yeah, this, this, this is definitely something you, um, like you said, you're grateful for. Um, Just uh, yeah. just you see you see the difference within like just low location and like what you have available, like resources. Um, Not saying that's not available in the city, but it just is. Yeah, I feel like people offer it to you in the city. You have to go out and get it. Like there's all this resource, but it's like nobody's gonna come and hand it to you. It's like, hey, Andrew, I think you should sign up for this. I, uh, yeah, out there is just kind of like, hey, you should do these three things if you if you want to get to this place. So that's the biggest difference I saw uh, when I first uh, moved upstate. But but yeah, uh, let's. I know Alex has a question for you, so let's go down to Alex. I know. Um... What high school did you attend when you was uh when you when you're, when you're living at now? I attended uh, John S. Burke, Burke Catholic. You know, Catholic, all right. It was a good high school. I'm not gonna lie. It was a good high school. You know, kids are a little bit iffy. You know, it, I don't know if it's because of family values. You know, we, we were all raised. You know, different places. And I know a lot of these kids were uh, raised strictly up here, so it's like very different. But um, other than the kids, I think that school was actually great. So. No, I can imagine because you're coming from number one. You're coming from a city environment where you have that all that diversity, so you have a little yeah. bit of everything. Then when you go to a high school like that, where it's kind of kind of like one minded almost, then you're like you're kind of weirded by that because not everybody has the same mindset. Yeah, and, and but, a lot of a lot of kids are rich in that school too. And I was like, damn, like pulling up in Mercedes and BMWs, and I was like, I'm still using my pop's car. And, I'm kind of I'm kind of grateful it's a Toyota, you know. So it kind of, no, it kind of it, it kind of in a way kind of humbles you, in a yeah. sense because it's like makes you appreciate what you, like I said, doesn't at least you weren't one of the kids where you lusted to have what everybody else had. You oh, were yeah. just you were kind of just like ah, it's whatever. Like my car is my car. It gets me from home yeah. to the house. I don't really care, you know. Because sometimes there's kids that that kind of pressure themselves to live up to. To what their friends have, so I'm kind of right. glad. Like you're, you kind of had your head straight. You was like, "Nah, it is where it is. I don't care. It doesn't matter yeah. to me." You know, not everybody has the privilege of driving the Benz at you know 16 years old. You know, what I'm saying oh, yeah. 17 oh, years yeah. old. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. but even if so, kind of humbles you down and be like, you know what, it's cool. Like, you know, it's what it is. My car does the same thing your car does. Just because you get, you know, just because it's whatever make and model it is doesn't doesn't oh, change yeah. the person that you are. You know what I'm saying? So For that's sure. definitely dope. So. Now that you attended, now you're in this high school. Um, how was sports introduced to you there? Was it kind of like pressured on you, or was it like you know you saw it and you were like, all right, let me let me go attack whatever sport yeah. is out there. Well, when I first started, um, when I get the summertime football, first thing I thought of because I know in middle school I did veer away from football, so I started from Mighty Mites. If anybody doesn't know about football, I started from Mighty Mites. Division one, two, and three, and then he got modified for, uh, for middle school. I stopped because you know, I guess I got bored of it. You know, I'm a kid; I want to do other things. But when I got to high school, I was like, I want to try it again. Gave it a try. You know, I loved it. They saw I was fast. They thought they saw I was very quick with the feet, and they put me in the team. And I had a great time. I had a fabulous time. You know, won winning football games. You know, it was great. It was great to feel that again. Mm-hmm. You know. But, you know, unfortunately, during that year, you know, that's when I first got my injury further into the season, you know, injured myself, but I, was, I tore my shoulder, you know, so it's like I had to recover for a couple months. So it wasn't, it was a little bit, you know, I had a great opportunity, but it's like, you know, at the same time, it kind of sucks because it's like, you know, you want to play, you want to be part of something great. And then it's like, there's always something that has to jump back at you, so. Yeah. So all of that happened. So all of that happened freshman year. Yeah. So 
I, there's a lot more to it, you know. Um, yeah, freshman year, you know, I tried to come back two months later into the season. I saw a little bit of games left. I played a few, I played, I think, two more games, and then I injured myself again and had to get surgery for it because it was just, my arm was just like, just dangling, you know. Usually, yeah. usually just push me and it'll pop out. If, so, yeah, before you, before he goes into the injury, he's, he's being really humble right now. Cause uh, yeah. let let me tell you let me tell you something. Uh, I see him play football, man, and this kid was talented. Um, the first thing that like gravitated me to like go to his games and stuff like that, cause he was at the time he was like playing basketball, but he yeah, also yeah yeah I, I would I would train with yeah. you too with basketball yeah basketball. yeah so that that's where we started. We used to play like like basketball in my driveway. Just just uh, it would be like afternoons after he had school. I'll come back from work, whatever the case is. We'll just shoot around stuff like that. Summertime, obviously. So. This is before your before you started playing football. It was like that summer before, right? So, yeah. so I, I got introduced to you like uh, like playing basketball, and it's like, like you know, like you see you when you see talent, it stands out. So for basketball, I was like, all right, he's good. Like you know, he's athletic for his for his age and everything like that. But then when I saw you playing football, like American football, like it, it, it I was like impressed because, like, I know how good you was until I saw you, and and. It, it, when you see somebody talented like that, and for me personally, I didn't get to play football in high school, and we didn't have a football team in my high school. We had every other sport you could think of but football. So, like, that's something I always wanted to do, and it's like, I want to live that story through you. So I was like, yo, I got to train this kid somehow, some way. Like, I remember we used to run, like, routes on the backyard. I just used to throw the football at him. So, like, little things like that, it, it, like just motivated me to want to go to your games and and they yeah you guys did the whole like friday night lights for saturday night, like yeah, like yeah, it was yeah, legit yeah, it was le- it was no, legit it was, it was legit like they had the fans they had the like cheerleaders like i remember when they would come onto the field and they'd leave the field to just be like people lining up just to like give them high fives and their jerseys were official it's like it's it's straight out of a movie, straight out of a show, like these like Netflix series you'd be seeing with these like quarterbacks and stuff like that. He was living that, and and I can only imagine. yeah, no, I can only imagine because I think that atmosphere is so different mm-hmm. compared to like a baseball game or oh, yeah. any other sport because it's like everybody takes so much pride in football. Like right. if you notice any high school that you go to, especially like you know. Like when my brother, where I, I lived in South Jersey for a while, so mm-hmm. you know, and those in that high school, Violent High School, they took football very seriously. As much as they took baseball, being you know having that that game, you know, them and Millville was a town over, so that was the big rivalry, is them and Millville. So when those games were coming, especially under the lights on Friday night, that was a big thing. You had both sides, you know, you had you had everybody there. It was a really like it's a really dope experience because me not playing, but just. I know for the their standpoint, being a player suited up, ready to go, you already know what it means. Like it, winning this game is the most important thing in your head. Like you're going into this, like even if it's a re- the first game of the season, like you're already like hyped up, like oh, like you're nervous, you're hyped up, you're ready to go. Yeah, yeah. The lights is on, right. the girls in the stands, like you <laughs> want to impress her or whoever you like is in the stands, and it's like that has to be so exciting. Cause I know for you it must have been like so hyped just to be like you know under that that whole scenario. For sure, and um, I have two questions for you. Um, you can answer them whatever order you like. But um, tell me a little bit about what position you played in high school, because I know you did a little bit of offense and defense, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I love defense. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But um, I played running back. You know, I, hey, you know, I'm not the tallest. You know, I'm not the biggest, but you know, I was able to do my job. You know, again, running back and linebacker. He also put me as the slot sometimes because, you know, toss me the ball, I would take off. But um, those are many two. And it was like outside linebacker, yeah, and running back. Okay. And um, tell me a little bit about your practice because I attended one of your practice. Um, I-, I was that guy that, like, down the line I was going to try to get into the school's coaching because, well, f- before you even tell me about that, tell me a little bit about the division because I don't think people realize how big these divisions are in upstate like when it comes to football, like there's a lot of talent. Like for example, this uh, school uh, named Pine Bush, like they have, they're legit. Like they have. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they kicked my ass. Like I, I remember yeah. her camp. There's not, there's a program called Campus Champions. Mm-hmm. So that's summertime program. that basically gets you ready for the real deal season. 
So I guess it's like preseason or whatever it is. But you basically train all day, all day. And it, it, under the heat, no matter what degrees it is, all day long, just constant training and training and scrimmaging. And I remember we, we were done training and we just scrimmaged pine bush. Mm-hmm. I got my ass beat. That that was crazy. I, I got like, it was fun. I had a great time, but you know, lessons learned, of course, but like we got our ass beat. Like pine bush is good. Yeah, I give him that, you know. And I remember I went to go uh, swipe at his legs and instead he bulldozed me. I was like, no fucking way. That's crazy. But yeah. I had a great time. It was great. <laughs> Uh, Alex, um, so like, just so you, you're aware, like Pine Bush, they have like NFL NFL players come out of there. Like their quarterback always goes to like a D1, D2 school every year. So it's like Pine, Pine Bush like really stands out, and like they kind of put that division like on the map. So you had you had Pine Bush, you had like Middletown, um, and then and then you had like schools like his where they were like private schools. Um, they weren't just regular public schools, but you know they they still were good too. So, um, tell me a little bit about your coaching, uh, uh, how the coach was because you guys used to run a lot of plays. You had playbooks, right? Yeah, yeah. We would have to. It's like homework. We, they gave us uh, like a whole binder full of plays, and we had to look through each one, and you basically study them, and you got to know them. You got to know them because when it comes to game day, and you don't know them. Like, asking me on the bench so you know that's why it was very crucial for me to you know i gotta know these plays you know it's just like just like the nfl you know everybody's competing for a position you know if you don't do your job someone else will replace you so it's like i don't like getting replaced unless it's for a good reason so you know i don't i i want i studied it best i could and you know i'm one of the fastest on the team so it's like i want to remain that way so but um but yeah it was crucial big time what was your favorite play to run, offense or play? defense? Oh man, I don't, I don't remember that. Um, <laughs> I think, I think, I think it was like a, it was like one of the screen plays where, um, where it looks like I'm doing nothing, and then they like do like a lob pass, and there's like the whole screen, and I just run up. So I like, I like those. Yeah, I'm, I was mm-hmm. out. I was. Oh my, I remember it was great. It was Roundout <laughs> Valley. It was like some school upstate, and it, you know, was it. Just a regular route, right off the middle, up the middle, the, the center moved to the side, boom, took off, scored a touchdown. It was great. I miss those times, man. I miss them. What about? <laughs> tell, tell me about. Um, so this kid used to truck people, Alex. Um, I used to, I used to be the stand, and I used to like, I used to be like, damn, that was him that did that. Cause, cause it's like you know, at the end of the day, they all look like you. Just, you gotta look at people's jersey numbers to figure out who's who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They gotta wear certain sleeves so you can stand out. So, like, just seeing you truck people is crazy. I, I think what what it was for you, you had a great first step. So, so when you're playing defense and you get the read, let's say they're running the ball, you get a good read. So you're like, oh, he's going left. So you will get a great first step, and since you're fast, you would just need two, three steps to like get get it moving, and then you would just yeah. truck them like. After that, because it's like yeah, so much force. During, oh yeah, bro! I remember during scrimmages. Oh my gosh, I would go wild. <laughs> I I would remember because it's like it's been so long since I played football, so I was just hitting people left and right. I don't care where they were. I was like, boom, boom, boom. It was fucking great. I loved it. But you know, even even up the middle, swipe his legs. Boom. Even even if he's on the sidelines, hit him on the sidelines. Like I was, I just it was great. And I was a small. Like I said, you know, I'm not a big kid either. You know, five eight. And there's a lot of kids a lot bigger than me, and I was still able to to take them out. So it doesn't matter how big you are. Yeah, it doesn't matter how big speed, you are. It's the speed of how you use your legs, man. Yeah, just legs and, and over your shoulder. That's basically it. Because so. mm-hmm. I can imagine if you're fast and you pretty much have that acceleration, those, like John said, those first two steps, that's a big yeah. thing because now that's all coming from your lower half. And you're yeah. dropping your shoulder. You're dropping your shoulder. That hit is coming. There's nothing you can do about it. Cause that's a hard pop. But I can only imagine how they felt yeah, after yeah. that. They're, they're holding their stomach for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> he was not showing anybody mercy either. Like he'll be at practice and like he'll still be hitting his teammates hard. Like you know, like just getting them ready. Cause you have to be realistic when you practice. You can't like you can't go. You can You have to go like a hundred percent. Because if you're only giving them seventy, eighty, it's like when your teammates are on an actual game. They're not gonna be able to progress or better themselves because they're so used to like you letting them get like past you or you're not hitting them as hard as they're gonna get hit in the game, right? So 
I feel like you ha- you got to put as much effort into practice, um, just like you do in the game. I know AI wouldn't agree with me, but <laughs> but um, but yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit about injuries. Alex, have you ever experienced any sports injuries? Me per se was um, I ended up tearing up my knee, mm-hmm. <clears throat> my right knee. I tore my ACL. Um, that was pretty much the bigger one for me. Um, it was a slight tear, but it was nasty enough to, you know, to keep me out for a little while. And after that, I kind of just didn't play sports after that. I didn't really trust my knee after that. It was more confidence thing than after that. Because, yeah. you know, being that I have to run and do all this stuff, you know, and being that I was, I guess it was different for me here. And that was just the moment I got hurt, I really didn't trust it. I was just like, you know what? I'm going to have to stop doing what I'm doing for a little while until I feel confident and ready to, to be able to do what I have to do. So being that, that being that is like, I know that you had the shoulder injury and I know that's a confidence thing because I know for you, because being that you have to use your shoulder to be able to drop down, yep. you know, get your shoulder down to run or you have to hit somebody that was that an issue. Was that more of a confidence issue? Once you got hurt, you were like, damn, do I really want to, you know, try that again? Because do, does it going to pop out? Is it going to hurt? Yeah. Yeah, I think that was the big issue for me. You know, when I first got hurt, you know, I was, like I said, very upset. You know, um, I was eager to come back. Actually, like after two months, like I said, came back, put a brace on, done. All that was going through my head is just I wanted to hit people. I was like, I'm, you know, I didn't care about it. So, like I said, played two games. The first first game was great, you know. Smack some kids around, boom, hit them. I, we played Chester. It was, you know, yeah. those kids, they're, they're, they were pretty good at that time, you know. So, you know, as soon as the kid caught the ball, boom, I hit him. So it's like, and then the game after, same thing. But then I think after that game, um, I went to, kid was running um, like a wheel. And he went out. I went to go tackle him. And I fell wrong, and it came right out again. And that's when the confidence level just left. I was just like, after that day, I just wasn't the same. So no. that that's, yeah, and that kind of sucks because it's like you rely on that, you know, you rely on that shoulder, like you like you rely on your legs. Yeah. And as much as much as you know, you I can run, but it's like damn, if if somebody hits me here, like that that's what gets you. Like even if, like even with um, even if for me it was kind of like when I was doing the rehab and the stuff like that, like I felt good, but in the, my mind I was like, damn, do I if I if I run off the bases or if I was to you know just running the wrong way or taking something off the knee, I was just like, that to me was like, in my head, I'm like, damn, that could end me for real. Like, that could really hurt yeah. more than what I Yeah. So no, I know I, for I, you, mm-hmm. so in your, that stays in your mind because even certain yeah. kids, I've seen, um, I've seen a lot of younger kids take bad hits, you know, and I know that some kids toughen up and they'll, you know, they'll come out and they'll want to do it again. Um, so, so being that the second hit came, it popped out again. What in the back of your mind? I'm guessing your heart was like, "Yo, I still want to play," but I guess in the back of your mind, you were more weary to say, "Damn, if if this is, you know, if this happens, God forbid, something bigger happens." Was that in the back of your head? Yeah, it's like you know, when it came out, I'm I'm just you know, like I said, you could get up from a shoulder injury, but it's like I just laid there, disappointed. I was just like, you know. And they're and coaches they're not allowed to pop it back in for you, I guess, like the old days. So I guess, yeah, no. you know, it's required for me to go to the hospital. So, you know, I just sat there and I'm like, damn man. And it's like, you know, it's like fully out too. So you can like feel like the whole like socket too. And it's like you're trying to I'm trying to like push a little bit, see if it could go. And it's like, you know, I'll just let you know the doctors do it because I don't I don't want to mess myself up. But um I know after that I knew instantly surgery. I just wanna get this shit done. I'm gonna get it fixed, so I gotta deal with it no more. Because if I didn't get surgery, I would just have to work out, and and that would take a long time to to develop muscle over that area. So you know, I just told him do surgery, fix it up, you know, so I could come back. How was go. how was the support system for you? I know, I know you're very like family oriented. Um, you know, I, yeah. your parents are both hardworking people, and you know, great great people. Uh, shout outs to them. You know, great parents. You, you guys, you have siblings. They they do a great job raising you three boys. And um, so how how what was going through your parents' uh, mind and heads 
just because I, were they ever, ever hesitant that you were playing football first of all and then second of all how did they take the injury how were they there for you um and what was the thing keeping you going during during that recovery um well when i first started playing again in high school my dad was like no no you shouldn't be playing you know because it's, it's dangerous you know you're gonna get concussion all this stuff and because I guess, you know, my dad used to be a football player. He used to play for the Kennedy Knights, and then he got scholarships to other schools. So, you know, he was a big dude. He was, you know, yeah. he was good. But, again, injuries, and he just didn't play anymore. But he didn't want me to go through that, and I didn't listen to him. So I was like, this is my life, you know. If it happens, it happens. It did happen, you know. He did jinx me, unfortunately, but, <laughs> you know, it's all right. Because, I, you know, I learned, you know. It's unfortunate, but, you know, I, I learned, you know. I, I, I really grew stronger from it because – you know, I got surgery for it, but I got surgery for it twice. I don't know if you know that. Twice. Wow. Twice. The same arm because I think senior year during, during gym class, I was swinging and it just tore right up. So I got it done twice. So on on both of my shoulders, I got this one twice and this one once. So clearly my body's trying to tell me something like you can't do it. Yeah. No more. You know, sometimes it's like you could push through and 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 not give up. But at the end of the day, your body has to tell you no, because especially if it's happening more than twice, you know, your body's trying to tell you, you know, that's it, no more. So, you know, I got to sacrifice something. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely, especially at that age, you know what I'm saying, when you're young and you feel, yeah, obviously when you're young, you feel indestructible, right? As any kid, you know, being 18, 17, you feel indestructible until those moments happen. And then yeah. you're like, holy shit. That's that to me, like I said, that's the biggest shock when they realize yo, I'm not indestructible. Like I can't, you know, I can go outside with no coat on. I'm not gonna get sick, you know. It's a whatever. I jam my finger. I'm cool. Whatever. I, it'll it'll stop hurting. And it's like you keep playing, and then when you get something like that, and you're, you're like, you know, damn, like I can't really do this shit anymore. And it, and it sucks because it, it, yeah, you know, it, it does things to you, you know, especially like so. Then now being that that shoulder thing happened, were you still able to play other sports? Like, you were still confident playing basketball or oh, yeah. anything like that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. It, it's, you know, like I said, for football, I try my best to keep myself as stable as possible. I, you know, I bought the most expensive brace, you know. You know, it, it don't matter what you buy. You know, it's if your body wants it, you know. But I went to, like I said, I went to basketball. I played basketball in middle school. I was like, let me try yeah. in high school. You know, I didn't really enjoy basketball that much in high school. I was like, you know, it's too uh, – too much favoritism, and I'm, I was like, I don't, I don't want to be part of that. I just, I don't, I'm good. And um, and then I did lacrosse in the spring. Cross, I loved. It was like almost, it's almost like football, but like less. You know, I gotta tackle people. I could mostly like like check them, like hard, but you know, <laughs> that was really it. But lacrosse, I thought was freaking amazing. I think, I think that's my second favorite sport. But other than that, oh no, I did track too. I you know just to keep myself motivated. And, I was gonna um, ask. I was gonna ask because I was like, "You that fast, man?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, 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 I got a second place a lot in the uh, the, the hundred and two hundred meter dash. I didn't do all the one. I was gonna do the hurdles, but I was like, I saw people busting their ass in that, and I was like, "Nope, I don't." I already got an injured shoulder. I don't need. Uh, I don't need to to break my knee with that crap too. I'm t- take the wrong fall and it's game over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why a girl in my school freaking tear her knee with that stuff, and I was like, "Yeah, mm. I, no." Because people don't understand when you, in these recoveries after surgery, it's a year. Like you're like I'm gonna sling for like a month, like in pain, like with this big ass, big ass like uh, pillow thing, resting like this when I sleep. It was so uncomfortable. Like I don't want to do that again. I I just I really don't. Like I just, especially three times I had to get uh, surgery for this. Like I, I'm done. <laughs> like no more. So. I, I took, you know, after high school, I was like, you know, no more sports for me because I, I you know, at, at the end of the day, who's going to last longer, sports or myself? Is like, you know, my I got to deal with my body for the rest of my life. So it's like, I'm going to just call it quits for right now and, you know, till my body heals up for a while or, you know, or just, you know, find something more uh, productive to do, you know. But I know sports for right now is just a no. So. So you're currently not uh, involved in sports, like until the, no. uh, this. Okay, um, no. I'll do, do it for fun, you know, of course, but not 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 for hmm. serious note. 
that did that affect uh your younger siblings like the day because i know your brother was kind of playing a uh, sports too because i know around the time you were playing basketball he was doing the same thing where you know yeah. he was he's younger than you obviously so he was in a different like he wasn't on your team but did he did he stop playing sports as well after he saw what happened to you or is or is he currently still playing no, sports no I, I guess he's just oh i guess he's lucky he's he's not the oldest kid because usually when you're a middle child you're you're almost perfect because you learn from the oldest one not to do, mm-hmm. you know. So you're, you're basically, again, learning from the oldest what to do, what not to do. And I told him, I was like, you know, I came into sports not hitting the gym as hard as I should. I hit the gym, but not as hard as I should. So he's hitting the gym really hard, which is great because he needs to do that. If he want, I told him, I'm like, you know, if you don't want to get injured, work out. You've got, you've got to strengthen everything. you got to. And, you know, and he's doing a lot better than me. He, he's building that confidence, you know. You know, I, I hear a lot of good things from, from people with him um, that he's, he's doing very well in sports, you know, very talented kid. So, you know, I'm, I'm very, you know, I, I wish him very well, and I hope he doesn't have to deal with whatever I had to deal with, you know. So, but I, I think he's doing very successful right now. So, you know, I give him all the props. What so, is he? But he I was, what? I was going to ask, what is he currently playing? Like, what sports is he currently involved in? I know he's involved in. Um, I think he just finished basketball. Okay. And uh, now he's in track, something like that. So I don't. But I don't. Like I said, coaches love him. He's a fast kid. So I'm like, you know, I'm glad. You know, don't just don't make the same mistakes I did. So. Yeah. Because he was there. Probably- yeah, yeah. It finally seems like he's like, yeah, you know what? I'm not gonna play football. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no, he, it's funny. Yeah, but I told him I was like, he wanted to play football. That was the crazy part. So you know, he, he did well. And I was told he's a good, he's a one of the good kids on the team. So, but you know, he didn't get hurt, and I'm I'm glad because I told him I was like, you got to work out because he. I remember he was in the emergency room with me, and I, I was in a lot of pain. You know, it's. it's Either with surgeries or they they had to like put, put my shoulder back in like it, it's it, it doesn't it's not like it, nothing hurts like it was it was a lot of pain I had to deal with so you know but I, I I'm just I hope when he saw me in pain that he would you know learn from me. so yeah you know. oh, yeah definitely definitely I'm good for him man that's good for him and that's at least he knows that you you got he's got you you know as that support system so yeah that's. Very um, like I said, that's dope. And yeah, definitely, you're right. People tend to forget that you're playing something as intense that your body has to be able. Yeah. Remember, there's there's people that play sports for necessity, which is they got a family to feed or they have to take care of their mom. Like, but you got to understand, taking care of your body has to be number one. At overall, playing a sport like football, hockey, also yeah. about sports that you really get. It. Soccer's another one. You know what I mean? You're you're out there running for you know for ninety four, whatever, ninety six minutes on a soccer field. But when you're playing four quarters of football or two quarters of football, you it's extreme because you're out there for God knows how depending on how you know the, how long your defense is out there, how long the offense is out there. Yeah, yeah. Your endurance, endurance and everything else matters a lot. You know, how you keep your body right, the stretches, the you know, all that stuff to keep your ligaments good. You can hit the weights all you want. But if you're not doing your stretches, keeping your ligaments strong, you know, your weight is only the, – the weight is going to really hurt you more than anything. Like you're, you know, you're big. You're a big dude, and you're not working anything out. You know, yeah. it can be worse. So, you know, it's definitely – you're right on the money with that, man. I'm, I'm glad that he's taking care of himself and being able to see them. I don't want to what happened to my brother that happened to me. So let me take – let me work out. Let me, let me learn certain things. And people tend to forget that. You know, people tend to, to to lose focus on that, but you know, Glaf, I'm like I said, I'm super proud of him. That hopefully he'll keep going, man. Hopefully he'll make something big out of it, or you know, helps yeah. him down the line. Oh, I hope so too. I you know, I hope so. I hope he's been watching me. Yeah, um, a a big thing that upstate for for kids in general, especially to play sports, is like uh, parents motivate the the concept of trying to get a scholarship. Um, I feel like. There's a lot of scholarships that come out of these schools um, for college. And, and you know, that's the first step. It's kind of like, I don't feel like if I have, like, when I, when I have a child in the future, if they decide to play sports and stuff like that, I'll kind of motivate them and just be like, hey, like, if you have that mentality to go pro, like, chase your dreams. But just kind of try to make the best out of it so that if you don't make it to the pros, you can you can get a, a degree out of, a you know, free scholarship. 
and and just that mentality where it's like you know take it a step at a time play good in high school you know get into a good college that gives you a full ride get good grades in college while you're playing sports try your best and then see what happens so i just feel like everybody's so caught up on trying to go pro especially um in that division that it can it can bring problems uh within school uh, balancing the life it can even create pro- problems within your family so it's like how are you able to balance high school just have doing get, getting good grades maintaining your grades so you could be on the team um i know the school you were in was a kind of a private school so they probably were a little more strict when it came to grades so you want to talk about oh, yeah, that yeah. a little bit oh yeah yeah of course um you, you gotta get a certain grade point average in order to you know, be in the team, any team actually. Um, like they don't let you play at all. It doesn't matter, you know, if you're like riding the line and pro, like you cannot fall underneath the certain, uh, I forgot what grade point average it was, but, um, but you know, they, they want every kid in that school to look good. You know, they don't want anybody failing, you know, like if you're failing, you're not gonna be in the school. Like that's basically it. They just kick you out. So, you know, no. um, but it was, it was very crucial, but you know, at the same time, um, I was able to understand that I needed to do well, you know. Like I said, I don't not really a fan of school, you know. My parents always, you know, you, you gotta focus on the grades, focus on, you know. Yeah. But you know, I as I as I did, you know, focused on that. Well, I tried my best, but you know, um, but I always made sure, you know, I try to do well. I think, you know, it wasn't even sports that was really concerning me about, you know, it was more like. Now, what if I came home with a bad report card? Which, you know right. how that goes. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Yeah. Am I, like, what, like what happened here? Explain to me. I was like, oh man, I, that, that's one thing I don't want to do. So that's why it's like I, I try my best. You know, again, you know, I'm the you brightest, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not the brightest kid, but you know. Alex, and the I'm worst part about it, back. the the worst part about it, Alex, you gotta you gotta hear it twice, cause you got you get home, your mom tells you, right, like. <laughs> Yeah. Puts in your place, and then your dad gets there, and it's like your dad does it too. It's like, damn, I gotta hear it wait twice. Till, wait, wait, wait till your dad gets like, home. Mm-hmm. Hold on a second. Wait till your dad goes home. I was like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and he That's asked you the same question. <laughs> exactly. You're just like you think you got your story right, but it oh, even gets man. worse because you're like now you're mixing up your story, and your mom's like, you ain't tell me that, you know? Yeah, but it's first, first you're blaming the teacher, and then you blame, <laughs> and then you blame other people, and then you and then you start just saying, yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing well. <laughs> For sure. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's definitely something you can't avoid. You know, it's, it's how I see it is we see it as a negative way, but it's also a positive thing. You know, not every yeah. kid has their family involved in their life and not every kid has that parent to scream at you when you do something wrong. So. I know we make fun of it. I know we laugh at it, but you also got to be grateful for it because it turns you into yeah. the person that you are. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I sometimes I wish you know, oh my, you know, again, you know, some of my friends up here that you know their their families just so chill. They're like, oh, you know, it's okay. You'll do better next time. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. For me, I got smacked around if I don't do better now. <laughs> so, but mm. you know, but yeah, you know, you know, it's like, like I said, you know. Not, not the brightest kid, but I was bright enough to do well and to, you know, play sports. You know, I was able to, like, juggle it fine, you know. Even if I slacked a little bit in school, you know, I was still able to do, you know, fairly well. So, you know, uh, it was a lot. It's it very stressful, you know, to, you know, focus on academics and play sports and train and study for that. You know, it's, it's a lot, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, it does get you ready for life because after high school, everything with the crap. <laughs> so it's like, I got to juggle, you know, work, school, you know, find out what I want to do in my life. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot, you know, especially giving, you know, give a girlfriend or whatever, you know, giving them attention. So mm-hmm. it's like, damn, that's a lot, <laughs> but you gotta just cope with it. So. For sure. So, um, so since you brought up a girlfriend, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about, um, kind of after high school, you know, how yeah. that transition to you're currently in college now, right? Yeah, second year. You're in your second year of college. Cool. So, um, yeah, I'm almost done. Nice, getting there, right? <laughs> yeah. It's... So, uh, so, so, tell me a little bit about. Um, I know your girl is a big part of your life. Um, you know, your family, your girl. Um, just yeah. tell me a little bit of where you are now, and uh, just kind of let's talk a little bit about her. I feel like you should. Uh, I haven't met her yet, 
I plan on meeting her when we hang out. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I think you met. I think I feel like you met one of my girlfriends I had in the past. I, yeah, it was, it was a blunt, it was a yeah. that I had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but... yeah, yeah it was, it was <laughs> let me tell you, I got made fun of being with her before. She was taller than me. She was like five ten, and I was like five five seven five, you know, five eight. Yeah, so it's like. It's like you she know, had good jeans. Like, oh. She had good jeans. Yeah, like, what you guys do? Heads or tails? You know what I mean? So it, <laughs> it, it was. It was again. It was a. Uh, it was a. Quite an experience, you know. Again, you know, everybody has their, you know, the first one, and then mm-hmm. they go to second one, third one. You know, everybody yeah. learns. So, but so that one was just crazy. <laughs> there you go. So, so what did you learn? So, like, um, obviously, everybody goes through a first love or first person they they you don't necessarily you don't have to get to the love part right but like yeah yeah how how were you and how do you develop yourself or balance a relationship it's hard to maintain a relationship and just do anything in life right so it's like yeah when you have a, a girlfriend when you have a wife whatever the whatever you have whatever the case is it's like it's it's hard to balance their life because their life matters too with yours so it's kind of like finding that middle point i know alex you could chime into this you know you have a you have a, a child involved in the pictures for, really? for you is more real but just both of you guys just tell me how how you make sacrifices for your partner and just things you learn in general because like i myself have a girlfriend um and when you really care about somebody you make a lot of changes um for them it could be also positive changes right so yeah so uh let's start let's start with you andrew and then we'll talk with alex as well just kind of tell me how your life changed after you got into a relationship um especially the one you're in now that's much more serious than your first one i'm guessing yeah 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 i've been with like a little bit over two years you know Mm -hmm. again the longest i've had so far um but you know it it does take away attention you know because when of course when you're single and and you focus more on you know, on yourself, you focus on more on what you need to do, you know, what things you need to get done, or, you know, things are more about you, which is a good thing, you know, which is also great. But, you know, when you also add someone else in the picture, then you kind of split that in half and you share some, some of what you are working on to give to her. So, sure. you know, like I said, you know, having a girlfriend, you know, a lot of positive, you know, but sometimes it can be negative to a man as well, you know, but do I regret any of my girlfriends? Of course not. I love, I love them. You know, those are all that I love, especially the one I have now. She's great. I love her a lot. Um, you know, especially Caribbeans. Caribbeans are very fun. Hey. <laughs> I mean, it's very like, you know, the moody part, you know, it's, it's a little bit I got to work with, but, you know, but hey, it's like, you know, I... We all stubborn. We get that way, but um, but so far, the time I've been with her, you know, it's you know, I have to make time. For, I have to make sure I make time for her. But, you know, I have to make time for myself. Um, you know, so it's like again, you know, I priorities as well. So I make sure I get my things done, and then you know, I put I also put her on the table as well. You know, so you know, if I have to do stuff with the firehouse, you know, I'm like hey, babe, you know, I'll meet up with you after I'm done. So again another priority you have one priority that you have to attend to then you have the second one so and unlike if you don't have a priority that's all you have is you know one thing but you know it's, it's definitely a split down the middle especially with having a spouse or you know a significant other so oh yeah most definitely man it's it's uh definitely different for me because obviously my son he's 10 years old so um yeah you know being that his my life revolves around him you know what I'm saying it's all about him it's not about some things don't become about me anymore. It's more about him. Oh, yeah. Being that he has to, you know, it's the, you know, it's giving him 100% of my attention, make you understand that I have to make myself understand him all the time. Obviously, when I was a kid, it was different. For him growing up now, it's a very different era. Mind you, we didn't have, you know, iPhones and YouTube and all that stuff when I was growing up. It was me and my friends outside. You know, our, our, how we received information was very different. So I got to also understand that because, you know, how he receives information and how I did, it was very different. So yeah. as long as I, you know, and then that and the fact that, you know, I, I work, you know, I, and I have to, you know, keep make time, for, you know, to understand him and speak to him and, then, you know, speak to my girl and then have these, you know, certain conversations, just being able to balance everything out because you have to. And then, and one thing that you did say, and I do agree, 
you never want to forget, especially in a relationship, never want to forget about you and always make sure that you have that time for you, especially with the things that you love to do. Always yeah. find that middle ground where you can do that because obviously in a relationship, you need that little, those little moments that you got together 24-7. You come home, you see your face. If you, I don't know if y'all live together, but especially no, when y'all live together. No, yeah, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. No. <laughs> so especially when you get into that space, it's like you basically got to find that middle ground where you guys are constantly with each other, yeah. you see each other's faces, but you got to be able to go, you know, do do your own thing, you know, not disappear, yeah. you know, not come back, you know, for a week, but you know, be able to work, go work out or, or no, yeah. play something that you love and things like that. So as you as you're developing your relationship now, you'll see that that when and then. A lot of other things have to, you know, you know, you guys got to find. Always feel like I said, always like you said, always find the middle ground. Always meet each other in the middle, and okay. everything's always going to be smooth. But if you kind of veer from that and you kind of, you know, create this kind of turmoil situation, it's, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, but, I, to- I totally agree with you with that. that that's perfect because I, honestly, I, I, after a while, I had to tell her, I was like, you know, you know, oh, well, she told me too. She's like, hey, you know, you know, make time for yourself, you know, and then you see me whenever you want, you know, just you know whatever schedule fits around you, you know, I know you got stuff to do and she, she agrees with this. So it's like, you know, you got to get to a common ground with right. you and your spouse or you and your significant other, you know, and after a while, because after a while, it's like all that, those butterflies, all that, that honeymoon phase, that, that shit, that shit goes out the window. I just hate how everybody's like, Oh, you know, you got to do this. You got to do this. And I was like, screw all that shit. You, know, you got the money for it. Because I sure don't. You know, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't I don't got money for all this crap. You know, we'll go to the city. We'll go to somewhere nice, but yeah, once. Not yeah. all the time. Not, yeah, no. Nah, oh, we gotta go look at the stars at night. No, we don't. <laughs> you know, I don't, you know, it's like, you know, again, after a while, you just get common ground. You, she knows you after a while. You know, you know each other, so now you start really working with each other. But yeah, I totally agree with you with that, though. Yeah, no, it's all, it's all understanding, bro. It's all how you yeah. communicate. Communication is always yeah. key. You gotta always remember that. I always remember that, and, and then, like I said, every relationship should be like that. The yeah, way you uh-huh. speak to your parents, the way you speak to your parents, the way you speak to, like I said, in the firehouse, you guys got to communicate, right? When there's a fire, you got to be able to communicate. Hey, yo, um, yeah. you got to do this, you got to do that. It's all about because from what I've seen and from what I've, I have a friend that actually uh, he works for that the NY. You know, he says it. It's everything is communication. It's it's yo, it's quick, fast. When there's a fire, it's like yo, yeah. we got to communicate, bang, 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 because we we got to know what we're getting into. We got to know what we're doing. Because yeah. if, if if something is miss if something is not spoken and you walk into something that you you weren't told you know what i'm saying that, that's yeah of course it's something gonna, yeah mm-hmm. they told us they're like if you don't communicate or do things properly you're gonna die <laughs> like you gotta gotta stay on point and you, get, you gotta communicate with and you gotta remember you gotta remember your life is on the line too it's like yeah. this this ain't a movie where, this ain't gta where you gotta reset or respawn yeah, right yeah, yeah. it's like it's if you get hurt, just just like in sports, if you get hurt, like you're gonna feel that, and and that's 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 what I learned from being in the fire department for five years too. Like I feel like the biggest thing I took out of it was um was like to be responsible and to understand it's bigger than you. Like it's really bigger than you. Like if you really think about the concept, it's crazy. You're you're going into random people's houses within a community to save their lives, to save their property, to protect their property. And you don't even know these people. You're walking in, you don't know their first name, you don't know who they are, you don't know if they're good people, bad people. Like you don't yeah. know these things. Like, and and I I know you have crazy stories of the fire department. I understand if you can't share these things because you know like you have to be respectful to the fire department, right? Yeah. But but like you see so much crazy things. Like sometimes you go into people's houses, they're they're hoarders, and 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 they, they have. have- it's 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 just it's crazy and I, I just wanted to throw one thing into the relationship thing. Uh the one thing I asked my girl when I first met her, I was like, Do you have hobbies? Like it, it, and she was just looking at me like I'm crazy, but she understood it because I, I feel like I feel like you need to have that balance where you make time for each other but you can't be with each other all the time. Like you need to give that person space, even if you're in the same uh, yeah, room. That's- you could be doing your thing on the laptop. The other person could be watching TV, whatever the case is. I feel like you need to have boundaries, but you also shouldn't be afraid to be together and, and just try new things. You got to be open to it, right? So that's the one advice I give you. Try new things. But going back to the fire department, um, I, that's the topic that's really big for me. Like, that's something that I, I did for a really long time. And, like, you, it's a brotherhood. Like, you meet people that become your family um you have to trust these people right so it's like 
you joined the fire department after high school, right? Or you were in high school? Uh, see, it was, uh, I think, senior year. Because I've been with the fire department for a little bit over two years. Okay. So, um, so I think it was, like, late senior year. Uh, I was like, you know, I'm going to join. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I love it. It's pretty great. That th- somehow I play an influence into that or something? Because I, I never even knew you joined. <laughs> but, like, you know, you knew I was always in the FD. With the, you have that in the yeah, back yeah, of your yeah, head. Yeah. Like, <laughs> give your boy some credit, right? Yeah, no. It's funny, <laughs> you know, I know Johnson. Well, I was like, you know, I was seeing. I see you good? Where, where do you go? No, no, I'm good. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> look, 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 look. That, that's the firefighter in him. He's like, he's he's worried about your safety. He's like, you choking over there? You good, bro? You you need some oh, yeah, yeah, some yeah, CPR? Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> to, to, be, to be CPR certified, you know, taking a freaking six hour class is crazy. Yeah, but I think that was like the only class I've ever taken in my life that was just mm-hmm. so useful to me. Like, yeah. I, it was so useful for me to actually do well in the test. I got a 98. Like, I, yeah. I've never done, you know. <laughs> so, but, um, but yeah, you know, my parents are like, oh, you know, do you want to, you know, join the firehouse? You know, is that something you want to look forward to? Mm-hmm. At first, I was like, eh, you know, I was like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'll give it a shot, you know. And then after a while, you know, I started really, you know, picking it up. And, it's, you know, I really enjoy it. You know, I'm one of the directors over there. So, um, trying to you know i've been making shirts for the fire department i've been you know you know going with them all the time you know i i remember i showed up to you know i was gonna show up to a scene just like butt naked because i i was in the shower this <laughs> pager went off so i was like you know how that goes with pager goes like, oh, oh my shit. god bro i was like damn i was like i'm wet and it, was, mm-hmm. it was terrible but you know i enjoy it i would recommend, recommend anybody i definitely recommend anybody uh doing it you know, it's it's a great experience. You know, it's you know, I'm not gonna lie, it's stressful sometimes. Yeah. A lot of information, but at the end of the day, you know, it'll be helpful for you and for the future because it, it helps you, you know, a lot. It really does, you know. Yeah. It open it really opens up. So let me ask you this. So now being that how did how did sports help with that? Because you know, having the right. structure of team, you know what I'm saying, help you now with yeah. the fire department. Yeah. That's the main reason why, you know, I joined too, because it's like, I'm so used to brotherhood, football team, basketball, it doesn't matter. I was in teams throughout my life. So it's like, I'm, I'm so used to, you know, I'm very, and it's like, I'm very, I, I care for people a lot, you know, because I was always make sure, you know, even the football team, hey, you good? You good? Can you keep going? You good? How's your leg? Is it good? All right, let's keep going. Come on, man. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always, it's always a brother. It's always, you know, brothers first, you know, so it's always, you know, I'm always like that. Even the fire department. I said, hey, you good? You know, do you need me? You know, what do you, what do you need? If, you know, refill your tank, you know, what do you need? You know, I got you, mm-hmm. you know. So even in training, you know, training was fun doing it. So, you know, but it's always a great experience for me, you know, that brotherhood really helped me out. And, and just being part of a team, you know, was, was basically crucial. So, uh, you know, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. So. Have you uh have you completed uh your training like like firefighter one and all that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so your interior? Yeah. Okay. So how many uh fires have you experienced uh so far? Like so far approximately. I think so far only one. And that's just one? crazy because you know we have a small town and we don't really get called to too much. And I think we mm-hmm. get like only like we get called to a lot of like smoke alarms or like gas leaks or whatever um mm-hmm. but but f- like you know full blown fire like mm-hmm. i think only only like twice a year or like three times a year like that really occurs for us mm-hmm. um but and when it does really happen i'm either at freaking work or you know i'm not home <laughs> mm-hmm. so it's like it's unfortunate and then the one time is actually like oh there we go i get my chance but um but yeah, you know, like I said, only once, but you know, knock on wood, you know, you know, I'm still good. But you know, I can't wait for you know something else to come up, and you know, I like you know, it sounds wrong where it's like I can't wait, but it's like at the same time, it's like I can't wait to learn, you know, learn more, you know, I can't wait to you know, right, and like understand how 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 the process it, goes more, you know. 
it's definitely a craft it's it it goes from because like the first thing they teach you when you come into a fire department is how it's like you have to be able to throw your gear on in a certain amount of seconds and oh yeah how how fast can you do bro i'm fast as hell bro i'm fast as hell bro yo shout out to my boy john and 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 everybody in the firehouse because they they used to like stay overnight with me just practicing bro like I, i brought it down like no lie like all of us, we were doing it like at 40 seconds. In 40 seconds, 40 easily. Seconds? 40 seconds? seconds, easily, bro. All wait, of us wait, wait, on wait, the wait, truck. Wait, wait. Is that, is that what, what the, what the outfit, in, inclu- uh, inclu- Including outfit? everything. Hood, yeah. everything, everything, everything. Suited up, mask on, everything ready to That's go. Bo- bottles on, oh, bro. Wow. Bro, yeah. I'm telling you, it, the trick is how you set everything up in front of you. So, one of the, yeah. the... What I did is I took the locker closest to the bay door, right? So... As soon as I will come in, my stuff will be ready to go. So I, I had my hood on top of my gear, right? So I would just pull it out, and I was ready to throw everything on. But obviously, like, it's different when you're throwing it on at the scene because normally normally the you have the bottles hooked onto the fire truck chair, right? So it's kind of like you push the lever, and you already have it strapped onto you, right? Lever. I don't know. But, well, we it, we had we, we just, had a, we just put it we just put it on and we yeah push out we push out yeah yeah we we, yeah, we had we had one of those cool trucks you know what I'm saying like like yeah, you yeah. you were able to do it manually or you were able to just push it out right but it, it's just about it really depends on the scenario because a lot of times you're getting you're throwing on your bottle when you're at the scene because yeah, you first right. you have to get there you know the chiefs looking around who or whoever the captain lieutenant is they're just like eyeballing everything looking yeah. at the four corners right eight like hey, like all their got, angles. You, you got, yeah, do you got an old chauffeur like uh, like the chauffeurs Yo, like they're, they're old always boys. old, bro. They're yeah. always old, <laughs> and un viejo. Un yeah, yeah. Viejo. <laughs> and you have to remember they don't let you take the driving test until you're at least in that area until you're like 25 or something. You have to be 25 yeah, or older yeah. to take the test. So it's like everybody is coming in is not gonna be a driver. Most of the time it's gonna be people 40s, 50s, you know, like the drivers right and yeah. and, and the, that water pressure thing is insane bro you got to do crazy math to figure out the exact pressure you have to put for a certain amount of front which holes you're using and then what type of fire it is you know you ever got shot in the face with one? Oh my gosh like the, wait what the wait with the, with the hose like, not yeah 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 yeah, I think it was like some event called a wet down. You know the wet downs? That oh, of course, event. of course. Yeah, so. Yeah, one of the kids opened the nozzle all the way. That shit just shot right in my face, bro. It had like a uh, well, mm. like a like a whole red spot. How was how was the pressure though? Like, was it like? That shit hurt. <laughs> yeah, it was up there. Cause if you put if you put a certain amount of pressure, it's, it's gonna send you flying. Like if yeah, that, you know what I'm saying? Remember. Remember my lieutenant gave me the nozzle and he cranked the pressure up all the way mm-hmm. and I went flying in the air. I was like, you know, it don't matter how big you are, don't lift your ass up. No, yeah, it's 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 it's, it's crazy for sure. Yeah. yeah, no, pressure pressure is insane, man. Like mm-hmm. I, I work a lot with hydraulics, mm-hmm. you know, and it's and right. it's and it's cool as it may sound, no pressure itself, like like on one of those lines alone, like on a mm-hmm. leak, I would never touch it because the amount of PSI coming out of that pinhole leak mm-hmm. can actually yeah. pierce my skin and inject me, and I'll get hydraulic poisoning from yeah. that alone from my pressure. So I can only imagine somebody opening you a, know, line, a, yeah. a valve, valve on you at like a, you know, God knows how much PSI at a right, thousand I, PSI. I was, like it was, just, it, was, it, was just, it was straight too. Mm-hmm. Just the, the straight the the straight aim. Oh my gosh, that yeah. was like these terrible. Bro. These lines get so much pressure that. They always teach you to have four people holding the line at different points so that you can put yeah, out a fire yeah. because you have somebody at the nozzle, which they're holding the lever, right? Yeah, but usually, usually you don't got four people at a scene, though. <laughs> got, well, like, we, we, we always did. We always did. We, we, really? Yeah, we, we, always had, we, always had, we always had a full truck. We always had a second truck always coming. Like a, well, I mean, an engine. You know, we, always, we, had a, we had a full engine, a full truck. And there will be an engine showing up in the scene 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes into the fire, right? So, yeah. so like, we always had that. And it's crazy because you always need that backup guy, like, helping with the line. You know, you, like, if you hold down your own, it's going to send you flying. Like, I know you've seen videos on YouTube and stuff like that of people, like, firefighters just, like, rolling on the floor trying to hold it to the line or hold on to the line with a lot of pressure. Like, that shit is real. And, and like, I want to go into, like, talking about uh, your first fire because... I don't know how big it was, but um, like I don't know how many alarms it was, but like my my first official fire was insane. 
it, 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 like the whole house was on fire, right? The and the second floor collapsed at some point when we're like halfway in. So like the floor, like the ceiling is collapsing and we're running out. And then one of my boys that I mentioned earlier, John, he fell on the way out. Like, but you have so much adrenaline going, like he fell and hopped up all in one motion and like kept running while like the, the walls are coming down behind you. So it's like, like, obviously like it's something you have to be very careful with. You have to take very seriously. Like, you know, you just recently got into the fire department. Like two years is still very, like yeah, you're yeah. still learning. Like two years is not enough in the, in the fire department to learn everything, right? So like, my big, biggest advice for for you is like take knowledge from from the vets to take knowledge uh, take knowledge from people who have experience, um, you know, especially people who who are coming from the FDNY coming into the department. Like take as much knowledge as you can because it's gonna protect you, and and um, learn how to use the equipment correctly. And if you don't know what you're dealing with, make sure you ask questions because at the end of the day, it's a brotherhood. If you're not doing something right, the next person can get hurt, right? including yeah, yourself exactly. so yeah, like exactly. so just like keep that in mind like try uh i'm excited that you're in the fire department and i feel like you know you can make a career out of this for sure um it, it seems like you're interested from what we were talking about before we started the podcast right so um definitely make sure you take your tests and stuff like that it's not that hard it's common sense just make sure you're reading the questions correctly um and yeah man i'm excited to see what, what where you end up for sure but since we're talking about that, what, what what is next for you and in your career? Like, what do you plan on doing? You're still young. How old are you right now? Uh, twenty one. Twenty one. So it's like you oh. got you got your whole life ahead of you, right? So it's like I know you're doing the whole college thing, but like, what is at the end of the day your like ultimate goal? Where do you want to head? And what's your, what's your current passion now that you know you're past the whole high school sports thing? Like, what's your passion? Um. Well. I'm trying to figure that out. You know, I have a lot of passions. You know, I, I love designing. I love that's what I love. Mm. And that's why I got into uh, architecture. You know, I, great major, oh, crap ton of work. Like they they sign projects every week. It's crazy. Um, but you know, I, I like you know the major. You know, constantly drawing out plans. You know, you know it's interesting. I love it. You know, I, I want to go through with it, see where I go. Um, do I love school? Absolutely not. I, I, I told my parents <laughs> straight out, I don't like school. Um, they're like, oh, you know, where you want to transfer to? And I told them, I'm like, I don't know. <clears throat> you know, I, I like the major, but I just don't, I just don't like school. You know, I, I just, you know, I, it's just like, it make it makes people so stressed out. And then when you actually get there, you got a degree and then you're like, what do I do with this now? You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, and then you end up getting a job you don't like. So it's like, you know, all that money went to where, but, um, that's what I was going to tell you because, the, the thing that a lot of people forget is that sometimes they end up doing things because their parents kind of force them to do it. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I kind of don't like that narrative. If, if it's something that you love, do it. It doesn't matter what it, what it is. As long as it doesn't feel like a job to you every day yeah. you wake up, you should be like, all right, I'm going to work. It's cool. Yeah. You're going to work with people you may not like or whatever, but if you're going to school and you're going to go work hard for four years, Make just make sure that it's something. Remember, you got to pay this money back, depending on what you do with it. Because if you don't have no scholarships or scholarships, whatever else is back, you got to pay this money back somehow or another. Yeah. Like yeah. I, yeah. I respect. Yeah, I respect people that go to like medical school and and you know become a lawyer and things like that because it's a lot of information to grasp. But you know you're paying a lot of money at the end of it all. But obviously the end reward is the biggest one, right? You yeah. finally once you get your. But if you're definitely going to, like I said to me, you're young enough to still be able to say you can still switch if you wanted to. But I think architecture definitely is a hell of a major just because how the world is changing. And yeah. you're going to need more architects and you're going to need more, you know, a fresh mind going into the, you know, how the world is going to be designed because the world is changing. And it all starts, like I said, like you're a part of that youth. You're. You're, you know, I'm old enough to still remember the past, but you're, you're the one coming up and you see the world differently than I do. You know what I'm saying? So it's, if definitely, if that's something that you love to do, and I know school sucks because it sucked for me too, say, because like I said, it's, it's definitely, I know one or two people that are our architects and mm -hmm. they love it. They love what they do because they're constantly out in the field. They're, they're not stuck in an office. You know, they're, they're, they're doing their job. They're out there. They're looking at it. They're revising plans. They're making changes. 
you know, they're doing stuff like that. And you're working with a team. You know, it's not like you're working by yourself. You're working with a team. Because I have one friend that actually does it, but he does homes. You know what I'm saying? It's just him by himself controlling who he has to control. And I got, yeah. you know, another friend that actually does this, like, real life, like, full, doing, like, 40, you know, 40-story buildings, 50-story buildings. You know, he's out here doing these full designs, and he has to make sure everything is correct to the team because, you know, one mistake is, is costly. But, oh, yeah. you know, it's a it's definitely a rewarding rewarding career. Yeah. So, I, I like I said, I, I, yeah, so definitely. But even if so, and even if you feel like that's not the way you want to go, you still have time to be able to say you can backtrack a little bit and go to another direction. I think yeah. I feel like once you go to a certain point, it's kind of like can't really backtrack out of it. You're already, you're already in it. But at least you're young enough to still be able to make that that kind of like, you know, say, mm, you know what, I can make the change. I mean, yeah. it's never too late to do certain things, but at least you're early enough to say, you know what, you know what, let me let me go in this way a little bit. Yeah. Or you can go whatever direction you want to. But I mean, if that's what you love, bro, do it. Do it because yeah. you're gonna I, definitely. I, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure if I love it, but I do. I do like it. You know, I, you know, I usually when I wake up in the morning, I was like, oh shit, I gotta go to school. You know, and usually these these classes are like three hours long, eight in the morning. And it's like back to back, and it's like it's exhausting, and it's like you do it every day, and you get tired. Of it. But, you know, it was, it was definitely very rewarding. You know, I learned programs, you know, computer programs. I learned how to do Photoshop. I never even done Photoshop in my life, <laughs> you know. But now I'm able to, you know, critique stuff. <clears throat> and, you know, I love designing. So it's like I'm able to, you know, create my own, like, building I want. Um, but it's not even just that, you know. Um, you know, I, I started my own little, like, shirt business. Like, I made this shirt, too. Um, uh from my fire department. So it's like, you know, it gives me, you know, I found a hobby for myself to do. So it's like, even if I don't like architecture, you know, I always like, you know, want to do, do stuff to figure out, you know, how can I make money? You know, can I start my own business? You know, can I start this, you know, but you know, I know I got to finish through the architecture, you know, get my, at least my associate's degree. That's what I'm trying to aim for, you know, get my degree in that. So I feel like nowadays you need an associate's for everything or not even associate bachelor's because, you know, it's like everything's right. requiring a degree for some reason. I, I don't understand why. Mm -hmm. um, like just the world. Know. Just the world we live in, bro. It's it's it's. Yeah. You know, is this an excuse for them to be able to, you know, justify hiring somebody? Because yeah. I've, I've no, I know people with the best minds. They're smart in school, but they can't. Outside of that, they're you know they don't know how to function. They have no kind of yeah exactly. You know, so for for whatever sake it is, man, just. Just like I said, learn as much as you can, and and get a grasp of whatever you and, and then whatever it is that you love to do, bro. Just make sure that you do it for you, and whatever you're doing, because you know at the end, like bro, if you don't become an architect but you like designing shirts, guess what? There's a whole avenue for that. You know what I'm saying? There's a whole avenue for you just to make shirts and be able to put it on. Look, like, you got an Instagram, so boom, you start putting out shirts. Everybody loves them. Guess what? That could take off. You know what I'm saying, or or any other little thing, man. You could, like I said, you learn Photoshop. I learned Photoshop too in high school. So if I want to edit pictures and stuff like that, or you can make your own logos, stuff like that. Guess what? Now you could become a web designer where you're designing websites or you're designing logos and you're doing little things here and there. So it's always an avenue of where you like. Like I said, design is your thing, and that's where you're going with. Where what branch you're gonna go off of? You don't know that yet. But at least you're trying it to, which is, like I said, the best thing to do is saying that you tried it. And the worst thing you could do is sit, sit there and say, damn, I never got to do it. Because a lot of people sit there with the, the, the regret that I never got to do it. But at least, yeah. like I said, you're young enough to be able to say, I tried it. I did it. I didn't like it. Now I can go here. And you don't sit with that doubt ever in your head. So, like I said, I, I, like I, said, I pray nothing but blessings for you, man, and just keep going through it, man. Because I know it's hard for a lot of these kids now. Because yeah. in, in this era now, to me, kids want everything instant. Like I said, they want it in their hands. They want it now. Or they feel like they they, they, they have some type of... Um, well, I'm trying to find the right word for it. I'm trying to, it's like they feel like they, they, they need things given to them. It doesn't work that way. But like not even with my dad, when he got here from Puerto Rico you know, in, in 66... To me, when I was going through high school and everything else, is what you wanted to do, you got to go get it. You got to go grab it. You know, and a lot of these kids now, especially like a lot of the YouTubers, a lot of the, the Instagram, TikTokers, 
you know, they're they're and people are amazed, like, wow, they're just making all this money because it's, it's what they love to do. But they're gonna dance, they're gonna show it off. You know what I'm saying? They, if they if they love being funny and doing stupid shit, they're gonna do it. They're gonna put they have they have the platform for it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So and they're gonna make a lot of money off of it, especially when they're that funny, they're that cool, they're that charismatic. And, pre- and like I said, that's dope. To me, that's that's kind of cool. If I would have had that in school, you know, at the, when I was growing up, maybe it would have been different for me. But now that you have the advantage and you have the information that you have, now at least you know that you know what you know how to market yourself. You know how to put yourself out there. You know what you know what to do to be able to get what you where you want to get to. Yeah, so, exactly. like I said, that's the biggest that's the biggest advantage that you have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that's um that's the hardest question. Uh, for young adults, when you like getting to when you go from that stage of just like going from a teenager mm-hmm. to actual adult, you know, getting out of high school, and it's like, all right, like mm-hmm. it really hits you, like, oh crap, like I gotta decide my life now, and I, and the sooner I figure it out, the better the situation I'll be in, right? But it's like you also have to be a little biased too, because it's not only about finding the right job to be successful, because it's it's very easy for somebody to be like, oh, I should be a doctor, I should be a lawyer. You know, I should be a first responder. Like, it's very easy to think that because those are like the the jobs that are paying. Those are the, that's like the norm. But you also have to do stuff that makes you happy. Like, if being a designer, you know, making shirts, which um, you gave me just the great idea right now. Maybe you can make a couple of shirts for the podcast. You know, where we can rock on the podcast. That'd be kind of cool if you could design it for us. Um, so maybe you could send me a couple of sketches yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, I started this like I said a week ago, mm-hmm. and you know, I started doing mm-hmm. it. Yeah, and I got, got a lot of people hitting me up saying, you know, yo, can you make me something, you know, from a girl yeah, bro. for Valentine's or mm-hmm. or a sorority and all this stuff. And I was like, I was like, it was only just yeah, me. Bro. You, know, you, gotta <laughs> you gotta make that business card, you know, pass it yeah. out. Just they they they'll let somebody how, else know. That's how it starts, man. Little things like that. You made a cool shirt. People's like, oh, you know, I want one now. So now you'll have yeah. like ten, you know, you'll have ten, twenty shirts, and then all of a sudden now twenty shirts become. 60 mm-hmm. shirts, 80 shirts, 100 shirts. And yeah, now you're kind of yeah. devoting to this thing that you love doing. Mm-hmm. And it's really dope because it's like, damn, it's just started from just my, my me making my company shirts, you know, making my, my, my ladder shirts to now making, you know, everybody that wants a shirt. And it's really dope, man. It's, that's Like I said, usually mm-hmm. that's how it happens. It usually those things like that usually pop off and it become, you know, a lot bigger. And it's and like I said, it's it's how you want to take it. It's how, where you want to take that from there. Because if that's your talent, bro, and it's and it's people seem to really like it, go keep pushing it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying keep pushing it, see where it goes. Because you never know, bro. Like I said, you never know where that makes you. Because you can actually be yo, you can actually end up with a really great pain. Like you said, you're making your own money. You're your own person. You know, you're at home. You don't gotta work for somebody else. You know, that's kind of like the goal at some point where it's you yourself that you're paying. You're not paying. You know, some you're not working eighty hours a week to pay somebody else. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, like, try it, man. Keep pushing it, man. If they like it and other people like it, keep pushing it. For sure. So, so going back to um, like what's next for you? Um, uh, so you left off a kind of you know you're you're doing the whole school thing, you know, trying to pursue that architect life, but you're also doing your you know like side hobby of making shirts and designs and stuff like that. Um, so I I just want to keep going down that that track. So like so what's next for you? Like after those two things you spoke about. Um, <clears throat> I don't really know what's next to me, honestly. You know, again, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like being at this age, everything is stressful because we're trying to, I'm trying to figure out who I am, what I'm going to do, you know, what can I do to, you know, survive in this world. So it's like, you know, I'm really trying to figure out myself. You know, I'm, I'm really, and I think that's, I feel like this stage is probably one of the most difficult because, you know, you're really trying to figure out who the hell you are. And it's, right. it's kind of stressful trying to, you know, find yourself you know because i i've been trying to reach out <clears throat> even things i love you know and sometimes even you know even you think you love something your parents shoot it down sometimes and it's like i mm-hmm. that time but you guys gotta stop you know, gotta let me do what i want to do because you know at the end of the day i gotta live with it i have to love it because i don't want a job that I'm miserable with i don't want to do that Definitely. i want to i don't want to have to go to an emergency job and and i have to stay at that job because i need to to just pay my bills like i, I don't i don't want to do that you know, sure. I feel like the feel like my family has done that for generations where it's like, you know, I, I need this job to pay for support for my family, food in their mouth, you know, pay pay their rent, you know, whatever. And it's like, I'm not, I don't want to live in that. 
I, I don't. So I want to make sure I find something, you know, I enjoy so I could end up making more money from. So, you know, I guess that's that's where I want to head to. You know, I don't know where it will be, but, you know, I'm hoping it will be down the path I, 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 I want it to. So. Yeah. And and don't 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 be afraid to like feel that way that you don't know what's next because that happens to all of us at some point in our life. Even even when you have stuff figure out, you still go through that what's next. It never goes away. It's just you start coping with it. Alex can agree with me because it's like you it's like it's kind of like problems. Like like problems come into your life, you solve them, and then another one pops up. And it's kind of like your life is never going to be perfect. There's always going to be hurdles you got to jump, right? So it's like, it's okay for you to feel that way. You're young too. Like, take advantage. Like, the next 10 years of your life, before you turn 30, like, truly try things. Don't be af- afraid to try things. But also don't entertain everything. Because if you entertain everything that comes in your way, um, it may take you to, it may set you back from where you currently were or, or you're currently at right now, right? So yeah. just like truly sit down, truly like take time to brainstorm. Like sometimes just like sit in a in a quiet room with the TV off, your phone away, just like and think. Be like, what truly makes me happy? And just be like, if I do this for the next 10 years, if I do this for the next 20, 30 years of my life, am I going to be happy? Am I going to be able to support myself? Am I going to be able to start a family, right? So these are things that you pick up as you get older and and it's fine to not know because anytime you jump into anything in life you're never truly sure right so like alex could agree with me right alex like it's it's not easy it doesn't get easier it's just you learn how to cope with it that's why that's why i'm even telling you like what's good for others is never good for you and following that train never like i said you don't you don't want to be stuck somewhere where you're constantly regretting it every day i know people like that and I hate that. They're just doing it because not it's not their fault. You know, sometimes you're put in the mindset because of your parents. Your parents are constantly, well, you need a, a union job or you got to need a blah, blah, blah. You know, that's not the same anymore how it was back in the, you know, 70s, 80s, now, 90s. And now, and now it's completely different. But yeah. you would do what is that you feel is right for you. Yeah. And like I said, and especially if you have somebody like your girlfriend that's supporting you 100%. You know, she's, like I said, she's definitely going to be somebody that's going to be with you right or die. You know what I'm saying? She's going to always try to help you as best as possible, but you always weigh your options. Always, always make sure that you, if there's, you're able to get three options, weigh them all out. Write them on a piece of paper and figure everything out. Damn, is this really going to be good for me? You know what? I'm, I'm cool for right now. Because you're going to get, that's how it is sometimes. And it's like I said, you you'll be stuck in a situation where you feel like you need to get out, and sometimes that's the you know best thing you got to do is just leave that energy because remember, energy follows you everywhere you go. Yeah. And, and, and if and if you're not doing something that you love, you're never gonna put 100 percent into it. Because like, exactly. like I said, like I said, I like the fact that you say like I said, you love the FD. Like that's you. You love that shit. You wake up when you get a call. You're you know you're excited about it, whether it's bad or good. Like you're excited about it because it's like you know what you're doing. What's the meaning behind that? That's what you always want to feel. That you whatever you're doing has some type of meaning for it. So I don't like I said right now I don't blame you that you don't know what you want to do. You're figuring that out, and you have enough time to be able to figure that out. Now once you figure that thing out, bro, you you ride that pine and you and whatever avenues come up from that. Sometimes they'll be good. Sometimes they'll be bad. You're gonna make mistakes here and there, and they're fixable. Always remember that your mistakes are fixable. Some of them you can't, but some of them you can. And whether you feel don't don't ever feel like damn I, I fucked up like you're, you're, like the mistake stays in your head and no it can be fixed. You just gotta be always be prepared for the fact that the thing that might come it may be a mistake but it can be fixed. Yeah, or if one exactly. door closes another one's gonna open. So never live with that doubt and and you're always gonna be good, bro. And and like I said, always do what you love and and. You'll never work a day in your life, but always be able to be be open to everything and not and and know what's right for you. Because if you know if your friends are bungee jumping, <laughs> you know you're you're like, oh, let me uh, do. I really got to do it? No, because you know it's not for you. It's not for you. It is what it is. That's what you like. Guys like to do is cool. I'm I'm all right with it. You know, it is what it is. But I'm not gonna do it. But you know I'm, I I you know accept your you know your way of life, and that's cool. Yeah. But as you as you grow, as as definitely you'll see it, 
Like I said, you'll, you'll see whatever we're telling you now, you're going to see it. You know, as sometimes even us telling you and warning you, sometimes it goes, like I said, it will it will go over your head sometimes. But once one day you'll see it. And one day, like 10 years from now, you're going to be like, damn, you know, Jonathan told me this may happen. And then you're, you'll be in that position. But you know what to do and how to navigate it. Mm-hmm. So you're going to be good, bro. It's, this is how life is. And whatever comes your way, you know what I'm saying? Always, you can't always be prepared for it because you never know what's going to happen. Just embrace it and deal with it head on. Never run away from your problems. Never try to put them to the side. Once you attack your problem, it, it, it always, it's always about you You get your face to head on, you, you take care of it, and that's it. It goes away. Because now you don't have to worry about it. It's not in the back of your head. You go and attack it, and you keep it pushing. And... You know, that's how life is going to treat you. You know what I'm saying? That's It's, ne- it's never going to be fair. It's never going to be X, Y, Z. But, you know, like I said, you're, you're old. You're young enough now to be able to make those mistakes. And you're, and you're, and you're young enough and you're and mature enough to understand that, you know, what those mistakes concur. But especially, you know, with school, just figure out what you want, man. That's all it is in life. Figure out what you want and live it. Live it and live it, and and you're gonna be alright, bro. For sure, um, Andrew. You know, you have a strong core. You have a, a strong group around you. You have your family. You know, you have your love life. You and you know, you have people like me where I don't see you every day, but you know, you like family to me. You know, you know. I, I miss you, bro. I, yeah, I, I I'm a. Like four years, right? It's, it's been, been like crazy, years. man. It's been yeah, it's been a while since like I feel like yeah. what you moved out of the neighborhood, I moved out of the neighborhood, and just kind of like hard to keep tap. You know, like everybody's working on their life, their career, you know, uh, their relationships and stuff like that. So it's hard to make time for people, but you know, I'm definitely gonna make time to link up with you. Um, and you know, you like you you have a you have a family member right here from me, but you also gain a friend through Alex. So. You know, just yeah, anything you need from us, hit us up. We definitely gonna have you make some shirts for us. We gonna help you out. We, yeah, what, what, you, whatever money we gotta send you away for the shirts to, to get your little yeah. business going, we'll do as definitely. well. Um, but like I said, you know, you family. At the end of the day, I want to see you succeed. Um, and like I tell everybody that's a guest here, I want you to come back and just uh, you know at some point and speak about what progress you've made in your life or what ideas you have or how. You know your shirt business is going if you decide to make one so it's like you know at the end of the day like even off camera me and you are going to be in touch much more um you know I, I feel like you're at a point in your life where you have a good idea of where you want to head and i just feel like you just got to follow through like I, I it's there you like the path is there you just gotta kind of walk along that line and know you're gonna stumble a little bit but i feel like with the right guidance and and the right mindset you'll be good bro you'll be good yeah for sure. My door is definitely open, Andrew. So, like I said, I'm, like I said, I'm getting to know you, and I already understand that your mind is, like I said, you're very mature for yourself for being 21. Um, but if you ever need anything, man, I'm, I'm here, open book, man. You ever need to talk about some shit, I'm here. And please don't ever forget that, bro. Us as men, we always tend to hide our feelings and always, you know, yeah, try yeah, to yeah. I, 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 stop I, I, doing I, I, that, but. Yeah, my dad be calling me names for like, oh, you know, what, what are you upset for? And I was like, I was like, you know, I get it from you, so stop with the shit. <laughs> yeah, no, but like I said, if you ever need, like I said, me and Jonathan, especially like I said, me, if you ever need to be able yeah. to vent that out of the way, bro, I'm here for you. I'm very big advocate of mental health. You know what I'm saying? Always, you know, push that narrative yeah. because us as men, we always send to bottle up our feelings. And exactly. not to worry, but you know, whenever, like I said, even whatever, whatever questions you have, or whatever doubts you have, my door is open. Jonathan's door is definitely always open to you, buddy. So, like I said, we're we're here for you, bro. And I wish you nothing but success. I wish whatever comes out of your situation, bro. I hope you get as many blessings and and you make the most of everything, bro. I sincerely hope that for you, Andrew. I appreciate it. Thank you. For sure, man. But thank you for coming on. Uh, it was a great podcast. Um, and, yeah, like I said, we're definitely going to link up soon. We'll, we'll stay in touch for sure. Um, and make sure you say hi to your family for me, man. I'm, I miss your parents. Yeah, I, I, will, bro. I, I know I know you miss my, my, my family's cooking and stuff. Uh, you know, my mom be throwing yeah, it down, God, chefing it up. I, but... I didn't have to starve no more. I was going to just be like, <laughs> I just you you miss having us next door, right? Or you used to pull up yeah. 
I don't... Oh my gosh. You can smell the food from down the road. You're like, yo, yo, your like, brother used to be in the house before me. I'm like, yo, I'm like, how you ate dinner before me and I live here, bro? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, everything before you eat, bro. <laughs> exactly. But you already know, uh, this uh, was Flip Talk Podcast episode six. We have our boy Andrew, our co host Alex, and myself, Kudos. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next podcast. Peace. Sure. Peace.